for no story is more moving or is more powerful than that of Jesus himself who demonstrated the power of his words by willingly laying down his life for us. We all know John 3, 16, for God so loved the world, not just the church, the world that he loved. And that inspiring message of God's marvelous, gracious love for the world is essentially what is known as the gospel. So when people talk about the gospel, it's that message of good news there. And that gospel has been spreading around the globe for a couple of over 2,000 years. And it continues to do so today. So, if we believe that Jesus wanted his life-changing message to be known, how would people around the globe find out about it? And it is what I believe the Jesus strategy that Jesus had in mind. I call it kind of Jesus's marketing strategy. Now here's what I think that is. Early in Jesus's ministry, as he was wanting to entrust this message to the world, he said this. He said, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and do what? Not glorify you, but glorify your Father in heaven. He was saying to those folks and those of us who are his followers, hey, you're my marketing plan. Think about that. I'm not going to buy an ad in Time Magazine or the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel or the Wall Street Journal or the Waukesha Freeman. I'm not going to buy a 30-second spot in the World Series or the Super Bowl. And I'm certainly not going to have one of those infomercials in the middle of the night that I'm going to star in to try to share my message. No, he said, I'm trusting you for that. You are my the marketer of the message to other people. People who are in your family, in your neighborhoods, in the workplace, in your school. Jesus is saying, here's what I want you to do. Live the kind of life that will illuminate my truth to people that will shine in that light, that will shine my compassion in dark places. Dark places and also at points of despair that will attract people towards me because, as he said, I am ultimately the light of the world. We often read this during Advent in John's Gospel where he said, it, in him was life, and the life was the light of all. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. What an incredible vote of confidence. Think about it, that Jesus would entrust the spreading of his message to people like you and me. What? A tremendous responsibility. So, how about this place? This place is real. We try to be authentic. It's not perfect. Far from it. But it's a real place. And the engine that, that drives this church is the heartfelt conviction that the Bible is relevant. It's true. It has something to say to our day today. And we want to honor the God who has transformed our lives 
and we want to be that particular kind of light. And Jesus said it very well when he said, you are the light of the world. A city built on a hill, that cannot be hidden. So if you claim this is your church, whether you're a member or not, just that this is your church, we all have a choice to make. We have to decide how bright our lives will be. And here's the reason that decision is so critical and so important. Because there are observers who may be considering the faith and they're going to be watching to see if your faith is deep enough, if it is loving enough to be just beyond words. And if it is real enough to have credibility, what are they going to find? What will they find? Now, let's get practical a little bit here. Who do you know this is particularly for people who've been around here for a while. Who do you know who has not been here for a while? Maybe they haven't been here since COVID started. Who do you know who you do not see here now? Maybe something may have happened. They could be hurting. Will you call them and let them know that they are missed? Let them know that their absence is felt, and that they matter. Think about it. Who are you not seeing who you used to see? Now, if you see someone else in those seats, that's a good thing. But who do you not see? Give them a call. Who used to set around you that you don't see here now? Will you reach out? And will you be a light to them? Who do you know that's on a path to self-destruction? You know that there is a disaster waiting to happen. If they keep going the direction they're going, be a real friend, will you? And offer an expression of care and concern. Be helpful. Don't be judgmental. There's a big difference between being helpful and being judgmental. Will you be a light to them? So who do you know that's just having a rough time? A rough time could be a season of discouragement and despair. For them, bad things, you know, they, it does happen. Bad things happen to good people. So share your time. Will you share your wallet? Will you share your talents to be a blessing? Will you be a light to them? Yep. We're Jesus' marketing plan. It amazes me. I would never do a thing like that. I would want to interview everyone who was going to be on that team and make sure they had everything cut out for it. But we realize this is God's way. But it's not only Jesus' marketing plan, but as we trace the scriptures, we can also see and connect some dots where we see others who realize that we are his marketing plan. Here's how the apostle Paul understood it. If we go to Corinthians, he said, we are therefore Christ's ambassadors as though God were making his appeal through us, through you. And Paul called himself an ambassador because he knew that when he proclaimed that gospel, he was declaring and he was representing Christ's message in the world. And so do we. Now, that's sermon one, part one for this morning, okay? Just 
put that right there because there's another part that I want to get at. And we talked about how we are Jesus' marketing plan. We're, we're the vessels that our Lord uses to reach out. We are the answer as we say yes to the Holy Spirit moving upon the church to be a part of God's answer as people hurt and pray. But I have been talking there entirely about outreach, right? Evangelism. Reaching out. Well, before we can effectively reach out we get to the second part of the message this morning they relate and it's a word i don't think it's really a word but we should make it a word it should be fully in the dictionary and it's not outreach it's what i call in reach before we can effectively be a part of that marketing plan of jesus and outreach there's something that we have to do inside and in reach because our light has to be authentic. We are a marketing plan, and the reality, if we look at it, we have rough edges, don't we? I know I do. Ask my wife. <laughs> Ask her. And I believe we all live best when we accept our humanity. Not as an excuse, never as an excuse, not I'm just human. You can get by with all kinds of things to justify stuff. But when we understand that being human is difficult, when I understand that being human is difficult for all the people who I work with and in, 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 in encounter. Life is complex, and we as human beings, we are vulnerable, and we are imperfect. We are not complete. We are a work in process. And that's why I think before we reach out too far, we have to in-reach deeply. And I guess that's why... I love the Psalms. Didn't Eddie do a great job reading the Psalm? Yay, Eddie. Yay, God. You, you brought it to life. If there's a Psalm to read and read and read and read over, Psalm 42. <laughs> psalm 42 is a remarkable Psalm. It's uh, really an honest, kind of a depressing Psalm. Because the writer is honest about their hurt, their pain, their struggle. And it goes up and down and up and down and up and down. And it's just so earthy. I love the Psalms because as you read the Psalms, their life in the raw. Nothing is held back in the Psalms. That's why sometimes we have a hard time. Do they really mean to say that? All the emotions there. The turmoil, the mystery, the fear, the jealousy, everything we feel is there. But the greatest thing about the Psalms is that they always take us beyond the raw, hurtful feelings to a higher, brighter place. So, a footnote here. Let's get real and practical. There's 150 psalms. There's 31 chapters of Proverbs. Here is a prescription to help us get through our own periods where we realize our humanity may be getting a hold of us, where there might be periods of depression or discouragement. Here's a prescription so that you can find and become a greater light in the world Read five psalms and one book of Proverbs a day. And you'll notice every month, with that discipline, you have read all the psalms, all the Proverbs every month. That'll help. Get real and practical and read them. The psalms and Proverbs are remarkable. Now back to Psalm 42. I would encourage you on this Sunday, this Lord's Day, 
as you relax and watch a sporting event or do the stuff we do on Sundays as we take this time off, open up Psalm 42 again. Read through it. Go through each passage. And as you read it, say a prayer. Say, Lord, how, can I, do I, how do I see myself here? How do I see your word of hope being with me as I reach inside myself that I can do a greater job in my outreach as a human being? I love how the writer of Psalm 42 concluded his psalm where he deals with how he's discouraged and depressed and how he's grateful for what God does. If we go into the 11th verse, it says, Hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my Savior and my God. That's the conclusion of going through that discouraging time. I, I, I have to maintain my hope in God. I'm going to praise him because that's my Savior and my God. Kind of like the wounded healer. For it is a gift to us of light in dark places. I'd like to add a few more tools of powerful promises to find light in dark times when we are in the midst of an inreach so that we can do a greater job in our outreach. And it's what Jesus said. Jesus is very clear about it in John's gospel where he said, in this world, you will have trouble. You will. He was honest about it. But there's hope. Take heart. I've overcome the world. For we may be and experience seasons of depression and discouragement. Jesus knew he would. Embrace that promise. I want to take heart for the one who I claim as the center of my life overcame the world. Now, it, now, it's interesting. I always like to study the Bible by saying, what is not said? We always talk about what's, what's not said. What's missing there? It doesn't say, for I have learned to cope with problems and tribulations. No. I have overcome, Jesus said. It's marvelous. And here's another promise to write down. And in fact, I would encourage you to maybe write these verses down in the, the front of your Bible, in the, the, the back of your Bible, so you can find them and get to them. And this one would also be uh, some words from the Apostle Paul. This remarkable man, the Apostle Paul, took on life. He lived as fully as one could ever live when he committed his life to Christ and believed in him and trusted him. He had an extraordinary life, but he also had troubles. He found himself in jail a lot for doing the gospel. He was always in trouble. At any time you take the risk as he did, challenges will result. But he was a fulfilled man. Here's how he encouraged the Corinthian church as he dealt with difficult times. In first or second Corinthians, he said, We are hard pressed on every side, but not crushed, perplexed but not in despair. Persecuted, but not abandoned. Struck down, but not destroyed. That expression, struck down, but not destroyed. I, I like how, how one uh, paraphrase uh, version of that verse says, it says, we may be knocked down, but we're never knocked out. I like that. Maybe knocked down, but nah. I'm not knocked out. Just let me have a little time of, uh, of getting inward so I can go outward. Paul had a great attitude and a faith to overcome. Paul committed himself to the power that was greater than he was. Although there was tribulation all about him, he was victorious. Yes, we all will spend time 
living in the valley. But we are always in the process of moving to the mountaintop. Be where you are, but look at the mountaintop. For it is there where we will find the fullness and we will find more of the light of Christ in dark times. So as you reach out, also reach in. Let us pray. Lord, we don't always understand why we have the experiences we have. We certainly don't understand times of depression, but we do know that you are always with us, working with us to draw us out of ourselves and up. Help us, Lord, to overcome and to be the light of Christ. 